I'm Chide Beribi, for those who can't pronounce my name very well. I, from Nigeria, studied in Ukraine, and due to the crisis, I'm a displaced medical student. So my talk today is how diversity in medical illustrations can improve our healthcare outcome. Well, a little about me, I'm from Nigeria, a quite state in Nigeria to be precise. In this picture, it was taken in 2011, and that's my beautiful mom. As you can see, that's me on the far right. I wasn't smiling because I didn't have breakfast in the morning. I lost my mom to ovarian cancer on 25th December 2011. So this is a picture I had of her last before she died. And that was the worst day of my life because 25th December is Christmas. Everybody celebrates Christmas and have fun, have good meals with their family. But I was crying. I was in pain. I was soaked in the pool of blood that gushed out from my mom. And I wished I was a medical student or a medical doctor to have a perfect solution at that point in time. But sadly, I wasn't. And that's why that gave me motivations to keep pursuing my dream to be a medical doctor. I applied to medical school for 10 good years, and I was declined. I was, I was denied admission to medical school. Family gave up on me. Friends gave up on me. I mean, family said, why are you applying to medical school for 10 years that you're wasting the time? When will you come out to be a medical doctor, to take care of the family, to cater for the family? I mean, didn't understand that medicine for me was more of a passion, not a luxury. And I wish they had supported me in the journey to become a medical student. I had to take a bold step. I did a first degree in chemistry in Nigeria for four years. And while still there, I kept applying to medical school. But as a young person, I now relented to improving myself. I kept on taking online courses. I kept on attending webinars, improved myself to become a better person. And then in turn, I met one person that changed my life. Fast forward to 2020, during the lockdown, I met my mentor, Dr. Oric Sidney. And he is the founder of the Association of Future African Neurosurgeons, which is a neurosurgery interest group for medical students. I want to become a neurosurgeon in the future. So I reached out to him and said, oh, I see your graphic designs. They're not really that fine. I'm a professional designer. I would love to work for your company or for your organization, and you should pay me. And he responded, oh, there are no resources to pay. And I said, okay, good. I would love to work pro bono for your organization. And he said, fantastic. And at that point, he saw my artworks and said, you are, you are artistic, you are creative, and you have passion for medicine. Why not bring these two together? What are thoughts? What are amazing thoughts? And how to make research, how to make uh, watch tutorials on YouTube, which of course, the only tutorials are then on YouTube, just, just a few. I watched some from videos on how to make illustrations, on how to use Photoshop, how to teach myself anatomy. And I would say it was a difficult journey in my life. From where I lived in Nigeria was a very remote area. That's my house and this is my church. So I would make a one hour travel every day for one good year to my church where I could get power supply to lay medical illustrations. It was a tough journey for me, but because I was willing to learn, I was willing to grow, willing to become a better person, willing to improve my skill as a young person, I had to make this journey every day. And at some point, people call me the church boy because I was always in church. And my mentor would always say to me, Chidi, my job will be over when you become a neurosurgeon. I had no family member that would tell me that, I had no friends who would encourage me, but he was my major source of motivation. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Hey, I'm just joking anyway. <laughs> Fast forward to 2021, last year, during the last year, November, this image on my shirt went viral. I mean, people say a lot of things that I haven't seen this in my entire life. For 50 years in the healthcare sector, I've never seen an image of such in my entire life. And I will ask today, how many of you have seen an image of such in your entire life? Very few number of persons. Well, people also said, does this matter? Does representation really matter in medicine? Do we need black images in our medical literature? Well, people made that comment. And I would say, I would ask you the same question today. Do you think these images are important in our medical literature? Well, allow me to convince you by the end of this talk today, because it really does matter. From the image on this slide shows the, va the variation in skin tone from a lighter skin tone to a darker skin tone. And you would bear with me that the way some skin condition represents on these skins are different. 
From a research carried out at the University of Pennsylvania, just 4.5% of images in general medicine textbook show black people. And also, observation solves 80% of cases that our fancy equipment cannot solve, which, of course, visual inspection is the key component to observation. Definitely, our skin, right, is the site of multiple, uh, of multiple signs, where, for example, skin conditions like psoriasis represent differently on skin tone. As a black person, the way heat trash represents on my skin is different from how it represents on a white skin. And that's why these images are important in the medical literature. In Africa, for example, those in the, those in the public health sector who go to communities to advocate for safety in malaria, safety in cholera, or, in, or COVID-19, the resources that I use for advocacy are white skin illustrations. Typically, you're going to a community of people who do not understand proper English, who are a small group of people, but the resources that I use for advocacy are white illustrations. There is this sense of foreignness when these images are presented to them. If we are looking forward to improve our healthcare outcome, looking forward to improve our, our educational system, the resources should be very relative to a particular set of community. So if we use black images to black community, research also shows that people become very relatable to these images, and they, of course, improve our health outcome. Shortly after this image went viral, I had a lot of people make comments like, I showed these images to my children, and they said, oh, I see myself now, and have more interest in studying medicine. It's amazing to know how a single image like this, because representing the black community, has brought up interest in learning medicine. These are why these images are very important. And what can we do as a community of people, as change makers, as global leaders? Education being the bedrock for knowledge transfer is the access to solving the disparities in our healthcare system. Medical textbook today has just very little number of black images. And if our medical students, who are going to be prospective medical doctors in the future, to have access to adequate resources to training them, then I would say that our outcome wouldn't be efficient enough. So therefore, there must be a review in our curriculum, there must be a review in our medical literature, there must be a review in our public health resources. There, in turn, our healthcare professionals, our healthcare providers have adequate resources in providing healthcare advice to the community, and of course, improving our healthcare outcome. A lot of people ask me questions. How can we support the journey? How can we join the train of people who are advocating for proper representation of people, of black people, or the Asians, or the Latinos, or the Hispanic in the medical literature? How can we join the train? It's very simple. Everybody has a role in playing in this. Everybody has a role in joining the train of advocates for proper representation. And I'm excited because shortly after this image went viral, I have seen a whole, lot of, a whole lot of black images online. A lot of people have been constantly advocating, constantly drawing black images, and say we are joining the train of people who are willing and who are so passionate about bringing this change. And that's the excitement, and that's a good thing. And as young people and as community of, 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 of global leaders, it is imperative and it's important that we come together to making this change. For example, sickle cell disease that originated in Africa affects over 300,000 people every year. And sad to say that there is little or no representation in cases of sickle cell. And black people are called drug addicts because they seek drugs to make, the, to, to make themselves better, to, to take away the pain. And that's the injustice in the system because of lack of representation. And that is just why these images are very important. This is a call to everybody that we have a role in playing in addressing the injustice in our healthcare system through proper representation. Thank you.